Hey everybody, this is Birch. Uh, this won't be one of the higher rated videos. I'm not uh, going, uh, DC Comics makes stupid decision, woke fuck, you know, none of that kind of stuff. Um, but, I, but, I, but I did want to, I mean, you know, I, I wanted to kind of throw something out there about Power Pack. So uh, before I get in, I mean, you know, it's very easy to get into the kind of the trap of talking about uh, a lot of just, just the culture war nonsense. It's extremely easy because in 10 minute little video increments, it, you know, you, people have a lot of questions and there's a lot of drama and there's a lot of chaos going on. And there's a police car uh, passing me by, not pulling me over tonight though, are you cops? Anyway, uh, but it's very easy to slip into that. A lot of the questions I get touch on the culture war in some aspect. And it's not just like one side or the other. It kind of comes in every direction. It's like, and, and I think in many cases, my conclusion is that people are kind of searching for meaning for why it is this way, because it doesn't make a lot of sense. Comics are, are meant to be kind of basic, fun entertainment. And yet we're, um, you know, we're, we're dealing with culture war stuff. We're dealing with uh, just the most painful kind of mind numbing aspects of comics. Comics should be fun. Instead, we're dealing with just like, what does this person on a live stream think about? And, and it, it's, it's painful. I mean, it's, it's painful to watch. Like I, I, you know, you, you, if you live long enough, if you pay attention long enough and it's easy to get caught into the details, you can watch like Heather Antos work her way through you know, it, it, NFTs are bad. Comic skate is bad. AI art is bad. Everything is bad. I, I mean, it just, you, you just, it, it's exhausting. And, and I start hoping that a lot of the people who are wound up in this are saving their tweets. They're saving their comments and they're just, um, you know, intentionally just, they're saving it so they can just repost the same thing, change a couple words around and they can go right back to it. I hope that, I hope that's what they're doing. Because otherwise, what a colossal waste of time. But anyway, that's um, that's neither here nor there. I wanted to talk about, this again, I, something that is not, you know, the most popular topic. I'll put it in here. And uh, nobody will really give a shit, but that's okay. And it's Power Pack. So uh, Power Pack, I, I'm, I'm hoping this hits some nostalgic feels for some people. Uh, Power Pack was a comic that came out. It was a limited series, I believe, that then transformed into a full series. Or Marvel was at least a little bit unsure about it. Uh, but it caught. It, it, it didn't do massive numbers, but it did much better than you're expecting. Because I don't think Marvel was really expecting that a, you know, a superhero book of kids would, would matter. But it turned out there was some interesting complexity. There were some aliens involved and you know, hiding from parents. And I mean, there's all, there's a whole dynamic to this comic that was both kind of tried and true tropes and also some pretty interesting kind of, you know, different things for comics. And then power pack moved from being a, uh, it was not doing great on the newsstand, but it was selling higher in the direct market. So it, it shifted its uh, shipping schedule. It went to the Baxter paper, which is a big deal for Marvel at the time. It was just a better format and everything else. But it had um, it had really solid art. I mean, the, the crazy part about it is that if you take and I think John Bognov was uh, the artist for quite a bit of it, and there's some other people in there. The art for Power Pack, by and large, was pretty top level, considering it was a book of unknown characters. You know, they did a they did Wolverine guest starred once, I think, and Spider Man because Wolverine was guest starring in everything, and so was Spider Man, but. By and large, they had their own adventures, their own little mythology. They didn't rely on kind of gimmicky villains and everything, but it worked. They established a core audience, and the comic went on for quite a while. Eventually, yes, it was canceled, but it lasted far longer than most comics do today, including bigger comics than the Avengers and Spider-Man and other things. It, it had a nice long run, and, and it worked because it had a very simple format. And I think that's the, the secret or the mystery that so many people fuck up is that they, they, when they, when they say we're doing a comic that doesn't feature one of the core traditional superheroes, we must also tweak the format of the story. We must also, you know, try you know, just have them do different things. We got to veer into slice of life. We've got to, we got to do something else to get people interested because 
no way people will be interested in a tried and true superhero format. But this book was, you know, four kids. They argued. Uh, they had four different powers. The powers were bestowed upon them by kind of aliens. Uh, they had to fight this kind of alien invasion that was happening somewhat in secret. And there was this kind of cosmic battleground, cosmic war that was going on. The, the kids were grappling with the idea that, you know, they, they kind of want to be heroes, but they're definitely not heroes. And there's like kid dynamics. The, the interesting part about Power Pack was that it was written in such a way that felt very true, very accurate to a kid experience it's it, if you if you um contrast it to kind of how writers write for kids today or whatever passes for ya um it it was um it was very authentic the kids felt like kids the kids were accurate um this comic so this comic if, if you were um if you're keeping track at home this this comic debuted in 1984 Louise Simonson was our writer. Now, she would obviously go on to do bigger and better things and be a legend in her own right. June Brigman uh, was the artist kind of out the gate. And, um, you know, there's a handful of other artists that came into it. Um, as I said, uh, John, John Bognov uh, was there for a while. There's a couple other people. Um, but it was, it was, it was cool. It, it, it um, Power Pack, oh, here's another, here's another, uh, uh, somebody must have gotten in a bad accident because there's those fire trucks and police cars going by. Cool. Anyway, um, it was different. The Power Pack family was a family. They didn't. They weren't orphans. They weren't. There wasn't some weird family tragedy going on. It was. Uh, it was basically, you know, it was a is a stable, supportive, married family. I have no idea. If like Power Pack now, as they've kind of revived it in later years. I mean, I know they've made um, what uh, Julie Power is uh, is gay, and I think one of the other characters, I want to say Alex, is was at some point he decided he was non-binary. I think they've they've messed around with that, and then I think as well, and I don't know if this is true or not. Somebody can can tell me. They took the parents. And they, uh, they made the parents like were divorced or they were going into therapy or whatever. They basically just made this entire family miserable, which fucked up the entire kind of aspect of, um, you know, of, of what made the comic amazing, which was that they, you know, they were an intact family. They did support each other. They loved each other. And it was, um, it was, it was, you know, a, a decent, good story. Um, anyway. Uh, they tried to do various things. So Power Pack, again, very popular in the 80s. Uh, the comic had a, a pretty good run. It was a, it was a, um, a popular title. It, uh, it, 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 but, it, but, you know, it, it kind of wandered. They lost attention in the late 80s. Um, I, I think 91 or 92 was when they stopped kind of publishing kind of the little specials and other things. Um, and then they, they kept trying to revive it. There was a talk that Power Pack would be one of the teams that came out of uh, the uh, conclusion of Civil War, uh, but they canceled. They pulled back on that, and then they did a couple series. Ryan North did a, a limited series that was uh, somewhat you know terrible as part of uh, Marvel Outlawed, which was like a different version of Civil War. They just kind of reclaimed some of the ideas, but um, I'm curious if you read Power Pack. Because I think that comic is is a pretty great indicator of how to do uh, you know a new comic right and a kid comic right, both things that the publishers are desperate to do more of. They want that YA money. They want to tap into some of this stuff. They're trying to get new characters off the ground. They're trying to get new concepts off the ground. Power Pack turns out is really good at doing that. And I think that uh, if you look at the model there, Louis Simonson did an amazing job of brand new characters, powers, doing unique things, you know, trying to just, just, you know, pretty basic concept. And uh, I mean, very simple, almost less is more. If you look at how they handle these characters now, including Power Pack, but also just the champions some of the new kind of young adult stuff Marvel is doing, it's almost laughable how totally against the formula of Power Pack they're doing now. 
So if you haven't heard of Power Pack, if it feels too old for you, if you're like, I'm not into, in, interested in uh, comics featuring kids and everything else, go check it out. It's very classic Marvel action, well-beloved by a lot of comic creators. And, you know, it, it just, it, it's, you'll, you'll see something there. If you're a comic creator and you're trying to write that YA book that the Mar your, your Marvel or DC editor wants you to write, go pick up Louise Simonson's Power Pack book and just look at how that thing is structured. Look at how the character dynamic is. It is a super obvious, super easy way for both how to introduce new characters and how to also make them charming, appealing, something that somebody actually wants to read. That's the way it should be. But, uh, but anyway, let me know if you read Power Pack. Let me know if you agree with me that this, this is the formula for how to do this model. And it's right there. It's published. You had, I don't remember how, like, 50 odd issues more than that of a comic that is pretty much your encyclopedia of this is how you do it. Just do it like this. And if more, uh, if more creators and publishers would take this route, I think in, in many ways that the, the weird part is I think power pack would do better today in 2022 than it did in the eighties because there is a high interest in, um, in young adult. There is kind of this group of comic readers coming off of uh, Dogman. And if you're looking at the Scholastic comics and you're thinking, how do, you know, I'm Marvel, I'm DC, how do I cash in on that? Do, just do what Power Pack did. Don't do it contemporary. Don't do it. Don't say, I'm going to do that but with a 2022 twist. No, literally just do the same thing. I mean, hell, if you were completely lazy and, and stupid about it, you know, grab Power Pack, get an artist to get in there and update the stuff so, it, uh, you know, the, the art and the look of the characters are not as dated. And just reprint it. I'm willing to bet, by the way, if you took Power Pack and you, you recolored it and you put it in a prestige format, you tossed it out to that uh, Scholastic Book Fair days at school, I suspect that thing would sell far better than the, uh, you know, the Uncancelable Wasp and some of these other series that, that Marvel has done. But I'm talking the original, the one in the 80s. It works. And, and to prove it, um, I grabbed one of the old trades that I had for power pack. And I handed it to my nine year old daughter and she, she freaking loved it, loved it. Now this is a comic from the mid eighties and she's, she's, she's loving it, you know? And uh, there was even a couple funny moments where he's like, what is this phone booth thing? I've never seen one of those before. Sad, but you know, that it doesn't matter. The, the stuff that is dated, she looked past. And, and so right now, one of the biggest problems the publishers have is how do you pull in that audience? Come on, Marvel, just literally, don't, don't reprint it in a fucking omnibus. Reprint it in a way that you could sell it at that Scholastic Book Fair. Toss six nine. I mean, hell, print it in a Tonkabon format, that smaller size format um, that, that puts like uh, 10 to 12 issues, maybe not even that, like eight issues in one book. And you could sell like six volumes of that thing. And you would, you would make bank, and you wouldn't have to do anything. And best of all, you could give Louise Simonson a nice little royalty check. Like, come on, go take that money. Uh, anyway, let me know if you remember Power Pack, if you remember, and, and, and let me know your thoughts on this. Like and subscribe, of course, and thanks for listening.